Hey people, welcome to the Run Testers. So the Mac is back, the Mac 6. We've done our test miles and we're ready to give you our verdict on Hoka's popular versatile daily trainer. It's been given a pretty substantial overhaul. The headline updates include a new supercritical midsole foam, streamlined jacquard mesh uppers and a revamped rubber outsole but it's still built for the same job in your rotation to be snappy and responsive enough to handle faster efforts and cushioned enough to kick back in comfort on the easier miles too. So is this a successful return of the Mac? Let's get into our Hoka Mac 6 review to find out. Those quick important details then in the Mac 6 stack height comes in the same as the Mac 5, 37 mils in the heel, 32 in the forefoot in the men's, 35 in the heel, 30 in the forefoot in the women's for a five mil drop on both. Weight wise, it comes in 8.1 ounces or 230 grams. That's a weight saving of, of about kind of one large grape over the Hoka Mac 5, so barely any difference. On price, they're sticking at the $140 in the US, but in the UK, you'll now pay 10 pounds more than you did for the Mac 5. These are now 140 pounds. So let's take a closer look at the shoe then, and there are some significant changes to the Hoka Max 6. The big news here is that Hoka has swapped the Profly Plus foam in the midsole for a single layer of supercritical EVA. The Hoka says creates a more responsive ride. Overall, the midsole platform looks slightly more compact. It's about one centimeter shaved off the length and some width cut from the widest part of the midsole and the heel. There's still a notable rockering here. And up top, you've got new Creole Jacquard mesh uppers with marginally more structure than you had in the last shoe and a little less flex across the top of the toes. Hoka says the heel collars have been streamlined, but you're still getting medium padded heel collars here. And there's not a huge difference between this and the Mac 5. Now the wrapping gusted tongues have also been refined, but they're virtually identical to the previous gen Mac 5. And there's an almost unchanged, no nonsense lacing structure that's nicely robust. When you flip them over, the flex grooves are also gone here in the outsole. And so is the exposed EVA foam outsole that you saw on the Mac 5. Some people felt that affected grip and durability on that shoe. And that's been replaced by a heavier duty rubber covering across a substantial portion of the outsole. So fit for me was all good in my normal size in the Hoka Max 6. Uh, it's got a very comfortable fit for me because it's quite a narrow shoe. Now that will not be good for lots of people, I understand, but I have a narrow foot and the way this holds around my midfoot and forefoot feels really good, very comfortable, very natural to me. So yeah, I really like the fit of it. Heel design is also very good. I've had no Achilles issues or anything like that while running in this shoe. So yeah, I was all good in my normal running shoe size, but it is a pretty narrow shoe. In testing, I ran in my regular Hoka running shoe size, which is a UK 8.5. The fit is certainly secure, you might say snug, and I think it's tighter than the Mac 5. As a result, I had good secure hold in the heels and across the midfoot with just about enough wiggle room across the top of the toe box and into that kind of toe box. Though there's not much space lengthwise in this shoe. If you like it dialed in, you can probably get away with going true to size, I did. But if you have bigger or wider feet, prefer more room to kind of flex those toes or plan to use this maybe for even longer distances, like say two hours time on feet or more, it might be worth considering going half a size up in these. Or Hoka offers a wide option that might provide a roomier fit. So into fit, and I would say it is typically Hoka on that front. And what I mean by that is it's definitely a little on the narrow side, a bit like the previous Mac shoes. Now I've had mine in a UK size eight, it's the same size I've had the previous Mac shoes in. Generally, I've had a good experience with the fit. What I would say is you're not getting a huge amount of space up front of the toes and a real kind of hugging kind of fit in general when you go further back in this shoe. So I think there may be an argument if you are between kind of sizes, maybe going half size up in the shoe if you do want a little bit more space in general, something a little bit more accommodating, but in general, it is quite narrow in terms of what you're getting here on the Mac 6. Elsewhere, lockdown, absolutely fine. Very similar to my experience with the previous shoes. Good amount of padding at the heel, no issues in terms of lockdown, in terms of any kind of rub there as well. I say, yeah, it's very Mac X in terms of the, the nature of this up and the changes in the upper, but I think ultimately it still makes it a, a nice shoe, a comfortable shoe. And yeah, I think fit wise, I think the main thing for me is still a very narrow hocker shoe. Um, and there may be an argument to go half a size up for some people. Now run test then, I love the Hoka Mac 5 as a go-to versatile option. It was a shoe you could pick out of the pile for a wide range of runs. And the Hoka Mac 6 builds on that do-it-all daily performance. Only I think now it's more adept at the upper paces. In testing, I've run around 40 miles in the Mac 6. That includes an all-out 10k race where I clocked a new PB. 
along with a good mix of marathon training sessions from fast intervals and fartleks to progression runs and slower, easier miles. Now this is an easy shoe to slip into, no fiddling and fussing to get it positioned on the foot, and there's a comfortable cushion disappearing feel overall, though it is a tighter fit than a lot of other daily trainers. Like the Socony Endorphin Speed, this is another shoe that feels ready to run the moment you put it on. Now, I wasn't 100% convinced about racing a 10K in the Hoka Max 6. There are many other shoes in Hoka's lineup and beyond that you would likely reach for first. Well, there's the Hoka Cielo X, the Hoka Rocket X2, the Hoka Carbon X2, but I was really pleasantly surprised. For a start, it helped me to a 37.46 10K PB, shaving a whole two seconds off, but they all count, right? The Hoka Max 6 certainly delivers when you're moving in good form with intent like it did on that race. There's a snappy response to the rocket ride and a good return from the supercritical EVA that feels lively and balanced and bouncier than the Mac 5. It's not aggressively springy, it doesn't quite pack the pop of the Socony Endorphin Speed 4, and some runners may want more bounce, but when you're clipping along with a high turnover, this shoe will give you back plenty. The rocker and that new outsole lends some stiffness that I think boosts the overall kind of responsiveness of the ride, and there's a light precision to the midsole platform. And along with that improved grip, that makes the Mac 6 agile, stable, and good for cornering at pace on twisty, turny courses as well. There's also a good level of cushioning to take the edge off any road impact. You probably wouldn't want to run a full marathon in this shoe, but I did an 18 mile progression run moving from easy to beyond marathon pace, and they actually handled all of that really quite well. On durability, the new rubber outsole has worn well so far, not too much wear to look for, so it looks like it's beefed up that element of the shoe, which is a welcome change. It'll be interesting to see how the supercritical midsole holds up to kind of 400 plus miles, but so far there's no worrying signs of deterioration in this shoe for me. So I was a very big fan of the Hoka Mac 4 and Hoka Mac 5. They were shoes that just had a very natural ride that almost just disappeared on the foot, whatever pace you were running at. They were very easy to get into sync with. They were comfortable for long runs. I really enjoyed them for long runs in particular, actually. And they had a bit of speed if you want to then go and do some kind of tempo sessions or speed sessions in them because of their very lightweight design. Those were quite similar shoes, but Hoka has made a more substantial update to the Hoka Mac 6. Obviously, it's a bit of risk there because the previous two shoes were very good but I think overall they've retained the key characteristic of the shoe which is that very natural feel like as soon as I slipped the shoe on it felt comfortable it felt natural it just went out and run and it just feels good at any kind of pace really it's got a smooth ride it's not like an exceptionally bouncy or propulsive shoe although I think there's a bit more bounce in the midsole now with the new design but the rocker is really well done it's very easy to for me anyway to line up with it with my gait pattern and you know whether I'm going slow easy long fast short all that it feels very good to run in the shoe it just feels like a natural extension of the foot. Since it is quite lightweight and the rocker works well and the foam's got a bit of pop to it, it is a shoe that you can use for faster efforts quite comfortably, whether that's short little interval sessions, and that works well for that because it is a light shoe, but it also has a ride that helps you sustain speed over longer periods. Like I think my longest run in the shoe was a 15 miler where I did the last five miles, pushing through the gears up to around my marathon pace for the final couple of miles, and it felt good for that. Like It's not gonna help you retain paces over those long distances in the same way a plated shoe does, something like the Socony Endorphin Speed 4, but it can do those runs. If you're looking for a plate for your alternative to those kind of shoes it is one of the best options out there because it does have that range you can run quick in the shoe comfortably and then you can also run very slow in the shoe comfortably i've used it for recovery runs the day after sessions and it does protect the legs really well like it's a pretty high stack shoe and although it's you know, billed as a slightly speedy all rounder it does have the comfort there for just relaxed all out easy running and then obviously the benefit of the outsole that's been added to the shoe is that it does help with longevity and grip on those very relaxed runs like use this a bit in the uk winter it's got a bit wet at times and it's helpful to have a bit of outsole there like i never had a problem with grip so much with the previous versions of the Mac, but you would rub down that exposed foam a little bit more quickly. Should have a bit more durability here with the Mac 6, and that will help if you're using it as an all-rounder, you're bringing out day in, day out for a wide variety of runs. So into that run test now, and I have covered 60K or over 60K in the Mac 6. Now, what I'll say is that, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the previous Mac shoes, love the previous Mac shoes. The Mac 5 has been it in my kind of marathon training rotation, so it's a shoe that I have been using regularly. So we've got a good sense of what's changed here from that shoe and whether those changes are positive changes overall. Now, what I love about the Mac shoe, it is a shoe that can handle a mix of running, a mix of running paces. You can use it for quicker stuff. You can go out and do more tempo stuff. You can ease off in it as well too. And I think what I was looking for is more of the same ultimately from the Mac 6. Now, what I would say in terms of my experience is that I think that it's definitely a bit of a mac x influence on this shoe and from that point of view i think that maybe this is a bit more accommodating at those kind of slower kind of longer kind of distance runs where i felt like with the 
Mac 5 or maybe previous Mac shoes, I felt like maybe I've only wanted to run maybe kind of 10, 15 miles in those shoes and then probably wanted to reach for something else instead. Now, a big story here is that the midsole and the midsole changes. And I do think that it still gives you that kind of core kind of Mac feel. It's responsive, keeps you low to the ground, but there's a nice rocker feel still there. There's a good level of bounce there as well too. To When you're running a bit quicker in it, it does feel enjoyable to run in this shoe and it feels lively it's obviously a bit firmer than other shoes but ultimately i don't think it's a firmness that really works against this shoe and it's a great weight as well you know it's a nice light daily trainer and that's what i've kind of really found in my runs i think the first run was kind of a 10k kind of tempo run felt great at that pace that's kind of worked the mac i think works best or has worked best in the past the next run i did was kind of a 10 mile run and that was kind of close to my marathon pace and absolutely was capable of doing that really kind of kind of rolled through in this shoe and it feels kind of nice to run at that kind of I say slower than my kind of tempo kind of 10k pace that kind of marathon pace is kind of 730 740 minute mile pace to give you a sense of how quick or kind of you know i was kind of running at that kind of 10 mile and then i did a 20 mile run and as i said i feel like Max, previously, have I wanted to take it long distances? I haven't felt as comfortable. I think you can absolutely do that. I know a lot of people do, but I think for me, I'd probably reach for another shoe. I definitely do think that what's happened with the midsole here and what Hocker has done in terms of those changes has made it a more, it just makes it feel a nicer shoe to run longer in. And I, you know, I did a 20 mile run in it, again, kind of probably slower than my kind of marathon, target marathon pace, kind of closer to kind of eight minute miles, kind of eight, 10, and it felt absolutely fine in there. I didn't feel an issue running longer in it. And again, I do think there's that Mac X influence of it in terms of what you're getting in the midsole and that feel and just giving you something that I think, you know, can handle that kind of longer kind of distances a little bit better, I think, than the previous Mac shoes. And then I've done some quicker stuff in it as well, kind of closer to, you know, kind of 7, 10, 7, 15 minute mile pace, kind of a shorter kind of five, four, five mile run. And it's felt absolutely fine at those paces. And, you know, I still think it gives you what you want or what we've expected from the Mac shoes previously. I think another thing for me as well is the outsole. And I think that's always been the biggest criticism of the previous Mac shoes, the durability, what you're gonna get from the outsole. It's totally changed here. There's, there's lots more rubber here, but you're not losing the overall, the kind of lightness of this shoe, which I think is really important here. So a super light shoe, a shoe that you can run quicker in, but ultimately I do feel like it feels like it caters better for running slower and running longer where I felt that maybe that wasn't the same story for the previous Mac shoes, at least from my point of view and running probably past kind of 10, 15 miles in this shoe. So I think I was a bit hesitant about the changes on the Mac 6 because I think ultimately I've loved the previous shoes and you know I didn't want it to move too far away from the previous shoes but I don't think it has done that. I think it's you know it's still a lovely light shoe. I think it's still a very versatile shoe and I think ultimately it does feel like a shoe that I'd feel more comfortable running longer and I think that's a really key thing here. It's become a more versatile shoe for me, a daily trainer shoe which I think is a it's a massive positive here and that kind of durability I feel you're going to get, you know, say I've done 60k in this shoe and compared to what my kind of previous Mac shoes looked like after that similar distance, you know, I'm not seeing that kind of level of wear or kind of concern that this is going to be a shoe that I can run a long, you know, a lot of mileage in. So yeah, very positive in terms of my experience in the Mac 6. I think the changes have been positive on the whole and it's a shoe, as I said, I've clocked up 60k in this shoe and I've enjoyed, you know, running in this shoe in a variety of distances and a variety of paces as well. Okay, so my verdict on the Hocker Mac 6, and I think it is a solid update on the previous Mac shoe. It keeps the core feel of the Mac shoe, so it's a shoe that you can absolutely run quicker in. Absolutely is a shoe that you can ease off in as well too, but I do think the changes do make it feel a little bit more accommodating at those longer, slower distances compared to the previous shoes. At least that's my experience as well. And I think that durability kind of boost as well that you're getting here is really important. I do think maybe it's lost, maybe just a little bit of that kind of snap I think that you got with the previous Mac shoes, but I still think it has that. I still maybe think it's maybe been reduced a little bit in terms of what you're getting and the changes that have been made here. But ultimately, in terms of being a shoe that you can train in, I think you can race in as well, and I think you can run longer in as well too, I do think it's more equipped. Price-wise, it's absolutely solid in terms of that, kind of in terms of value. I mean, the most obvious thing I think you're going to compare it to, or I would compare it to, is the New Balance Rebel V4, which is a shoe that we've all loved on the channel. It's a similar price. I think it's a similar 
kind of feel in terms of that experience. I think maybe there's a slightly more aggressive edge to the Rebel V4 when you're running a bit quicker in it, but ultimately you're getting this here as well and this kind of non-plated kind of, you know, trainer as well. So absolutely good value, I think, in terms of a shoe. If you want a shoe that can do a lot, and I think definitely can do a lot more in terms of running longer and giving you the kind of level of cushioning and protection over those longer distances, I do think the Max 6 can deliver that. So if you are looking, I think, for a, a good value daily trainer that can offer, you know, a good feeling when you're running faster, but also when you are easing off and just logging that mile, kind of mileage as well too, there's absolutely a shoe that can do it. Verdict then, and for me, the Hoka Max 6 is a fun, light, lively, versatile, do-it-all daily trainer that's very good value for money. And it's just definitely a step on from the Mac 5, in my opinion. If you only want one shoe to cover a wide range of runs, this shoe can take care of them all. There's not much it can't handle, but it definitely has a faster, shorter, sweet spot. And it's a long way off the big, soft, pillowy, easy day shoes like the Asics Gel Numbers 26 or the Brooks Ghost Max for the easy runs. But there's enough softness and protection in the midsole here, I think, to cradle you on your slower efforts should you need it. I love the no-nonsense simplicity to the design that makes it an easy shoe to pick up out of the pile for pretty much every run. Now, if you're a fan of subtle colorways, I think Hoka has ticked that box too. I know some people weren't keen on this when we put up the first run, but I quite like this. The big question though is, is it better than the Socony Endorphin Speed 4? I'd say probably not. We'll have a head-to-head -head on those shoes soon, but it's certainly in the top five best daily trainers of 2024 so far for me. Is it faster than Mac X? Certainly a close call, and there's definitely an argument for saving yourself 20 bucks by buying the Mac 6 instead over that one. Would I buy it over a cheaper deal Mac 5? That's another really good question. I think for me, the performance is different and improved enough to say that I think I would buy it. I don't think this is one of those where the new gen is just slightly better as a shoe. I think the ride is quite significantly different here. So yeah, I think I would be willing to spend the extra money. So I really rate the Hoka Max 6. I think it's a great shoe. We, like, we did our rotations video recently where uh, we picked out you know, our easy, fast training and then race shoe. And you know, the Hoka Max 6 was a shoe I strongly considered putting in as my easy run shoe instead of the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 because I do think it is comfortable to use for all those easy runs but has that versatility as a daily trainer to use for faster stuff as well. I think in the end, what really swung it for me was the fact that it's just always raining in the UK, and especially in recent months. And the outsole on the Velocity Nitro 3 is so good for that. So that's kind of why I picked it over the Max 6. So if you live in a very sunny climate and just prefer a lighter cushion shoe, Max 6 is a very good option just to have as a cushion shoe in a rotation, which is obviously not the job it's primarily designed to do, but it is good enough just to use in that role. And then I think it is also very good to use as an all-rounder, a daily trainer that can tackle all your run. And it's a great alternative to super trainers for that job, because if you're looking for a plate-free ride, I think the Hoka Max 6 and the New Balance Rebel V4 are your two best options. And when it comes to picking between those two, it's a bit tricky. I think the Max 6 is a little bit more comfortable and cushioned if you're looking at lots of long runs in particular, but the Rebel does those well, and it is very lightweight and has a bit more bounce in its midsole, slightly more rocker feel to the Mac. Overall, I probably slightly prefer the Rebel myself. We'll have a full verses on the way where we'll dive into these thoughts in more detail, but they are both cracking shoes that you can use for a nice variety of runs. No plate in them, no need for a plate. They're very lightweight, they're comfortable, the foams are good, they can do fast runs. You know, and the Max 6 is a great all round daily trainer, I would say, and also a great cushion shoe if you prefer a lighter shoe just for your easy runs as well. So, within Hoka's lineup, there are a few shoes that overlap a little bit with the uh, Max 6. So, you've got the Mac X, which is their super trainer, which has a Piba foam in the midsole and a P-Bax plate. Didn't really get on that well with the first Mac X. I felt it was you know, fine, a pretty enjoyable shoe to use, but it's reasonably heavy. It doesn't actually have a lot of punch and pop for faster runs. So I kind of ended up using it almost in the same way I'd use the Mac 6, which is a lot cheaper. And actually the Mac 6 feels lighter, feels more natural on the foot. And actually, because it is lighter, it turns over really well. I think it's just as good for speedy stuff while also being as comfortable for easy stuff. So if I was looking for an all-rounder and picking between the Mac X and the Mac 6, I would get the Mac 6 myself. I think it's just a better shoe and it's cheaper. Then you've got the Hoka Clifton 9, which I think is a pretty good daily trainer in its own right. The Foam's not as impressive in the midsole, it's a bit heavier. It's probably a good alternative to the Mac if you don't think this is cushioned enough, if it's too lightweight for you to use for easy running. Clifton Nile will do the same job with a bit more support and a slightly firmer midsole, which might help give you a bit more support. So it is a great daily trainer, one of the best on the market without a plate, but if you are happy to use a plate, then I think you will get a slightly higher level of performance, especially when it comes to the faster speed. If you're looking at things like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 or the Adidas Boston 12, which doesn't have a plate, but has the energy rods, which act in the same way. Those kind of super trainers, you know, at the very best of them, I do think are the most versatile shoes on the market there are a lot of them that i don't think are that great and actually aren't better than the max 6 like the mac x or indeed uh, the new balance sc trainer v2 i think they're those are okay all round daily trainers but i don't think they have a lot more speed than the max 6 whereas the endorphin speed 
and the um, Adidas Boston 12, I think, are more versatile shoes that are comfortable for easy runs, but then have a bit more explosive speed for the fast stuff, aided by the tech in the midsole. But if you're going to go plate free, the Max 6 is certainly a great option, and I think it is just a great all-round shoe for mooching around at easy paces or running fast. And I think it is a successful update to the line, which has produced some really great shoes in recent years. So there you have it. That's been our review of the new Hoka Max 6. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Don't forget to like, share, maybe even subscribe. If you did enjoy the video, ring the bell too so you'll hear about when our Max 6 head-to-heads hit the channel. They'll be coming soon. If you're interested in daily trainers, I'm popping a video up on the channel now that you should watch. Looks at one of my other favourite daily trainers right now. Otherwise, thanks as ever for watching and we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers. In the meantime, happy running everyone.